Good morning, everybody. I'm Father Frank Pavot, National Director of Priests for Life. And welcome to the Supreme Court on a day where we must be here to bear witness to the truth. Brothers and sisters, the cause that we, the pro-life movement, have brought before this court today will prevail. It will prevail despite the lies of the other side. It will even prevail despite the sad loss of one of our friends on the court, Justice Scalia. And isn't it poignant this morning that as we stand here and pray and preach and reflect on what's going on, that that flag is at half-mast. We remember a man who dealt with the very issue that the court is dealing with this morning and who said that the court should not be in the abortion umpiring business. His view was very simple. Abortion should not be decided by this court. One way or the other, it should be decided by the people and their elected representatives. And we're here to reaffirm that message today. If the people of Texas, if the elected representatives of the people of Texas, and of the gov if the governor of Texas all together say that they want the women going into those abortion facilities to be protected, then they should be protected. It is the judgment of the legislature of Texas that this law should be enacted. It is the judgment of the people of Texas that this law should be enacted. The court, the court should not substitute its judgment for the judgment of the people. That's very much what this is about, brothers and sisters. It's not only about the need to protect these children, the need to protect their mothers from an unscrupulous abortion industry, it's about the need to protect the right of the people to govern themselves. That's what we're here to stand up for. Now can I ask you to join with me in a few moments of prayer, because in just about 10 minutes these arguments will begin inside. And so let's turn to the Holy Spirit, the font of all wisdom. Let's turn to the God in whom our founding fathers trusted when they established this court and when they established the Constitution on which it rests. Let's turn to that God, the source of all life and the source of all our rights. Let us pray. Almighty God, your word tells us that you are found not in the wind, not in the earthquake, not in the fire, and not in the noise. Oh God, your word tells us that you are found in the silence. You are found in the peace of our minds and our hearts when they rest in you. Oh God, you are found in the peace for which we strive and work and pray. And Lord, your spirit is found by all who invoke him. And so we invoke your spirit today upon ourselves. We invoke your spirit today upon our nation. We invoke your spirit today, O oh God, upon this court, upon the justices of this court, upon the attorneys of this court. We invoke your spirit today, Lord, upon the defendants in this case, representing the state of Texas and their people. Lord God, we ask that the spirit of wisdom would take hold of these proceedings today. That truth may prevail. 
that justice may win. Lord, we are not here seeking ourselves. We are seeking your glory. Let your glory shine in these proceedings today and in the will of your people. And now, brothers and sisters, I want to ask you to look at this court and we're going to sing together. We're going to sing Spirit of the Living God fall afresh on them. We're going to sing that for the court, for the justices, and for those who will argue the right side of this case today. And then we're going to sing Spirit of the Living God fall afresh on us because we know how much we need Him. Let us pray. Spirit of the Living God fall afresh on them. Spirit of the Living God fall afresh on them. Melt them, mold them, fill them, use them. Spirit of the Living God fall afresh on them. On us, Spirit of the Living God fall familiar with this book. This book was written 20 years ago by our friend and colleague Mark Crutcher of Life Dynamics. We at Priest for Life were privileged to help him put together some of the information in this book. And I would ask all our friends on the other side of this issue here today to read every page of this book if they have the courage to do so. Because in page after page of this book, you find the reason why we need laws like HB2 in Texas. In page after page of this book, you will read the stories of women who were deceived in abortion facilities by abortionists who could not only get, who could not only not get hospital admitting privileges, but who could not even meet the most basic standards of medicine. In this book, you will find the evidence of women maimed, killed, bleeding to death in so-called safe and legal abortion facilities. You will find the evidence of high school students administering anesthesia in these abortion facilities. You will find the evidence in here of why abortionists need to have the kind of regulations Texas has passed. Why should an abortionist not have hospital admitting privileges in a nearby hospital? You tell me why not. What is the matter with these supposed doctors who do not even deserve the title? This is the book that shows above anything else that the horrors we saw in the case of Kermit Gosnell are not the exception, they are the norm. Lime 5, brothers and sisters, is a book that needs to come into the debate we are having here today. Brothers and sisters, it is in this court today not a question, as the other side will argue, of an undue burden being placed on women to get an abortion. 
This law does not make abortion illegal. This law simply says that the clinics and the abortionists need to live up to certain basic medical standards. It's not, this is not a law to close the clinics. This is not a law to make abortion illegal. This is a law to say to the abortion industry, if you pretend to be authentic medicine, act like it. But they don't want to act like it. No, they don't. The reason the other side is whining and complaining that this law, if upheld, would shut down most of the abortion clinics shows that not that there's a problem with this law, but that there's a problem with the abortion industry. Their whining and complaining proves a point we have been making for decades, that they are both unwilling and unable to live up to the standards of medical care in this country. This is not a law that makes abortion illegal. This is a law that gives the lie to the abortion industry when they say they are health care providers. You want to be a health care provider, then act like it. That's what we're saying. We're going to have some others pray and speak this morning, so I ask you to be attentive, be focused, be in prayer. And uh, don't be distracted by the lies and the nonsense going on all around us. We are here today to proclaim victory. And brothers and sisters, victory will be ours. God bless you.